Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us today is Michael Raleigh, President and CEO of Group 10 Metals, which is known for platinum, palladium, nickel, copper, and cobalt in the prolific Stillwater District of Montana. Mr. Raleigh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Maurice. Glad to be back. Glad to have you back, sir. In 2018, Group 10 Metals began their first season on the ground and identified 14 target areas on their flagship project, the Stillwater West. Today, we have the results from two of the 14 target areas, which are quite impressive. But before we begin, for someone new to the story, who is Group 10 Metals and what is the thesis you're attempting to prove? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, at the very highest level, um, we're applying geologic models that were developed at the world's biggest and most economic platinum, nickel, and copper mines. Uh, these are the mines of the northern Bushveld or Platte Reef District in South Africa. Uh, we're applying those models to the Stillwater complex in Montana, and this has not been done systematically before. Uh, the Bushveld and Stillwater complexes are both large igneous complexes, they're both magmatic systems, and there are many known parallels between the two. Despite those parallels, we are the first to bring together a, a large land position with a truly fantastic database and then bring in this Platte Reef expertise to enable a uh, systematic exploration for these massive deposit types uh, at Stillwater. Um, and in discussing that expertise, it's worth noting that uh, Ivanhoe's Dr. David Broughton, who is one of the co-discoverers of their Flat Reef mine, uh, which is now in development, uh, joined our team late last year, which is a pretty good validation that we're on the right track here in Stillwater. In our last interview, you shared the next unanswered question for Group 10 Metals will be assay results. On the 25th of January, Group 10 Metals issued a press release entitled, Group 10 Reports High Grade Palladium, Platinum and Gold from the Wild West and Boulder Target Areas at the Stillwater West Project, Montana. Take us to the Wild West target area and provide us with some in-depth analysis on Group 10 Metals results there. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Thanks, Maurice. Um, so this most recent news release uh, is the first in a planned series, and you see that uh, the roadmap for that basically in the, in the top left here. We've divided this 25-kilometer wide property into a series of target areas, and we'll basically be releasing results um, west to east in the areas that you see. Um, it's the Chrome Mountain and Iron Mountain area that have the most uh, drill results historically. That'll be in the subject of subsequent news releases here. In terms of the current news, it focused on the Boulder and Wild West, which is highlighted there. And um, the Wild West target area The Wild West target area has um, the, the Platte Reef potential that we see property-wide um, is well documented there historically. It also has the reef type high grade targets as shown in the red ellipses at the top of the, of the claim block. And then it also has this high grade gold occurrence, which is the pine shear zone. And that may be unexpected for some people, uh, given that the Stillwater camp is more generally known for palladium and platinum and nickel and copper chrome. This is actually a significant uh, area of gold mineralization, and it's uh, got some spectacular hits uh, that we'll get into. Um, in terms of the Platte Reef target, we'll start there. This conductive high that's shown contains uh, some very high-level conductance in the rocks, as evidenced by these purples and pinks. Uh, historic drilling has shown that that uh, does indeed contain copper and nickel, and that's, um, that's an excellent indication of the potential for this Platte Reef-style mineralization. We also have some spectacular palladium hits, this 10 gram uh, per ton palladium, very high grade, also with significant platinum. That shows not only the level of mineralization in the system, but also the potential for these high grade uh, reef type deposits that of course the area is more known for. It's worth noting that sitting just above the claim block here, approximately where my cursor is, you have the 80 million ounce uh, JM reef deposit, which averages staggering 16 grams per ton of palladium and platinum. So you know there's a lot of metal in the system, and this, this lower zone that we're in um, continues that, that trend. Um, 
in addition to the high grade samples um, summarized in this table at the bottom uh, left we see some very good hits for palladium for platinum um, and also so some good indications of base metal uh, mineralization which again ties into that plant reef bulk mineable uh, scenario these are priorities for follow-up in 2019 and uh, we look forward to, to discussing that in further news releases i'll move down to the pine shear zone discuss the, the gold results there um these 2004 hits were actually drilled by our our current qualified person are not considered historic uh and they concern they confirm the presence of of significant copper and nickel in that system, although the conductive highs have not been tested. And that's one of our uh, key items for follow-up. These PC series of holes uh, from 1983 um, show the potential of this pine shear zone, which is a, uh, a later geologic event within the, the still water layered system. Um, something has introduced a lot of gold to the system as shown by these fantastic lengths and, uh, and mineralization, gold mineralization. Um, we see, for example, reading back up, 11 meters at uh, 12 grams per ton gold, um, which is a very high grade hit and, and good length within that eight meters at 16 grams per ton. And then the whole PC5 three meters at a staggering 23 grams per ton. That's, that's two thirds of an ounce. So it's very high grade and nice lengths of it. That's definitely something for follow up in 2019. Um, in addition, we've got crab samples in that area, rock chip samples. And we see not only high grade gold mineralization as shown in this first sample here, 22 grams per ton gold, but in addition, we see some high-grade palladium, uh, 10 grams per ton of palladium, and almost four platinum as well. So you're seeing mineralization throughout this area, um, not only the, the PGE nickel copper that you might expect from the, from the district, but also high-grade gold, and that's uh, very compelling to follow up in 2019. You know, Michael, these numbers are quite impressive, but let me ask you this. You're in the most prolific area with the highest grades, uh, concentration grades of uh, platinum and palladium. You strategically have your assets positioned there. So were you really surprised? Uh, no, and we, we'd, of course, seen this data as we got into the project in, in the early days. It's nice to prove it up in the compilation effort and make it more formal and begin to discuss it uh, publicly. But uh, the Stillwater District is, is very well mineralized, and, and you're right, that is very well known. Um, what's pleasing now is to, is to be able to reveal the, the results of the compilation effort and, and plan our programs for 2019 as we begin to reveal what we think we've got. Well, the results are remarkable. We discussed the Wild West. Let's move to the Boulder target area. What has Group 10 Metals excited here? Sure. Well, the Boulder area has uh, less data than Wild West and, and then less data still than the Chrome Mountain and Iron Mountain target areas. However, it does have that lovely conductive high as shown uh, in figure one. And once again, the conductive highs have not been systematically tested. Um, we do have the data from a historic drill hole, that's BR2, shown more or less in the middle of the Boulder target area. And that shows nice intercepts of copper nickel mineralization. We have no PGE data on that, and that's uh, that's something that we'd like to, to remedy. Um, in addition, we've got a uh, very nice base metal hit up here, including a very nice cobalt of 0.117, um, which speaks to the, the technology and battery metal potential of, of these systems. Bushfeld is less known for cobalt, but we're seeing very nice levels of cobalt here in the Stillwater complex, uh, which adds a nice um, co-product to any potential operation here. So in terms of 2019, um, Boulder won't be a focus. Um, as we'll discuss later, we're going to have to focus on the more advanced target areas. However, we definitely will be back there and we'll continue to move it along um, maybe in our 2019 work. 
Switching gears, we introduced the value proposition of Group 10 Metals on the 2nd of November. Since then, the company has successfully conducted a financing and the share price is up 29%. Please provide us with the company's current capital structure. Yeah, I'd be glad to. We have uh, 59 million shares outstanding at present and a market cap of about $12 million. Uh, and that follows that, uh, that raise that you mentioned of $1.2 million back in November, which we did at 15 cents, uh, and in rather challenging market conditions, which um, speaks to the uh, strength of this project in particular to attract investment, um, even in a rather challenging market. Sir, what is the next unanswered question for Group 10 Metals? When should we expect results, and what determines success? Well, I guess the unanswered question is, is, is how is this possible? Is there actually still water in Montana? Um, these districts have a lot of parallels, and still water is well known for these three very high-grade palladium platinum mines. Um, we're looking forward to revealing why we think it's there and how it's been overlooked historically. I mean, this district has not been systematically explored for these target types, and we're the first to bring together the land position with the data, with the team, to do just that. Um, so as we touched on a minute ago, we'll be launching a series of news releases to reveal what the past year of compilation work has shown us and and, and what us, including David Broughton, uh, see in this, in this project and the potential. Um, as we mentioned, we'll move from uh, west to east across the project and the next news releases will detail the Chrome Mountain and Iron Mountain uh, target areas, which include the most of the uh, of the historic data, including the 200 uh, drill holes. And, uh, and of course, we have almost 12,000 meters of that core in our possession and uh, have relogged it now. So there is some, some very exciting um, uh, revelations to be revealed in the coming news releases. Mr. Raleigh, what do you see as the biggest challenge for Group 10 Meadows, and how do you plan to mitigate that situation? The biggest challenge facing us may just be the size of the project. It's, it's a fantastic in scale. Um, as you've seen from our figures, we may have as many as eight plat reef deposits across that based on the coincident geophysical anomalies, uh, soil anomalies, and then just the geology and historic drill results. Um, thankfully, and, and the way to address that is um, it, the, the quantity of data and the compilation effort that we've done help us focus um, our exploration efforts. Um, so prioritizing targets is, is, the, is very much the plan. We've done that, and we look forward to revealing our 2019 plans. We're going to focus basically on the Chrome Mountain and Iron Mountain areas where we have the, the greatest density of historic drilling and go out from there. Um, and I think it'll be a very exciting year for us as we reveal what we have and build it out with our 2019 exploration programs. We had a terrific reception at the Core Shack here at Roundup just uh, earlier this week. Uh, we've definitely attracted the attention of majors, and that's the the way forward that we see. That we can we'll do a couple of rounds here ourselves and uh, improve up what we think we have, and then look to engage bigger partners down the road as that becomes appropriate. Sir, we've covered the good. What keeps you up at night that we don't know about? Yeah, the last time we talked it was uh, the share price and uh, that has gotten a lot better as you mentioned thanks to our campaign of, of news releases and I think also the core shack at Roundup uh, did a lot for us. The good news in terms of share price is that um, we've only just begun to reveal uh, what we have on the project and we have a series of, of planned news releases and a, and a major promotional push beginning here which will carry us right up through PDAC. Um, we've had a number of very excellent meetings as well recently and uh, we're excited to to begin to reveal what we think we're on to and what 2019 will hold for the company. I think it'll be a pivotal year. Michael, today we've covered the value proposition of Group 10 Metals, but Group 10 Metals is actually one of three companies comprising the metallic group of companies. Please introduce them to us and share their value propositions with us. Yeah, the metallic group is a collaboration of, 
three independent public exploration companies, growth stage companies. We've essentially launched uh, one company each year, Metallic Minerals in 2016, Group 10 in 2017, and then most recently Granite Key Copper uh, just a few weeks ago. Each one has been put together with the same method that you see at Group 10, um, which is to acquire a high-quality brownfields asset in a known mining district beside an existing mine, and then make that acquisition strategically uh, in a depressed market at a price that would not otherwise be possible in a, in a more normal market. And then add a substantial database to that um, and a world-class technical team, a world-class corporate team as well, um, and bring in geologic models from outside that district. So you've seen us do that at Group 10. We're applying this plat reef thinking uh, for the Bushfield, South Africa, to the Stillwater District. Metallic Minerals, ticker is MMG, is applying geologic models from this from the multi-billion ounce Coeur d'Alene Silver District in Idaho to the Yukon's Kino um, High-Grade Silver District. And the parallels are there. Um, they're very good indications of, of success in that one. And then similarly at Granite Creek Copper, GCX is the ticker. Um, we're applying geologic models that are new in the district. This is a billion pound copper district in the Yukon. Um, models that were developed at the neighboring Minto mine were applying to the Stu high grade copper project. Um, and uh, that one is shaping up very nicely as well. Uh, it's only been trading for about 10 days at this point. Um, and there's a lot to be released on that one in the coming months. In all three cases, um, we expect to add value uh, by de-risking the projects and fast-tracking them to resource delineation stage. Michael, for someone listening that wants to get more information on Group 10 Metals, please share the website address with us. The website is www.group10metals, and Group 10 is spelled out uh, all in letters, so G-R-O-U-P-T-E-N. M-E-T-A-L-S dot com. And as a reminder, Group 10 Metals trades on the TSXV, symbol P-G-E, and on the OTCQB, symbol P-G-E-Z-F. For direct inquiries, please contact Chris Ackerman at 604-357-4790, extension 1. That number again is 604-357-4790. 90 extension one he may also be reached at info at group 10 metals.com and as a reminder group 10 metals is a sponsor of proven and probable and we are proud shareholders for the virtues conveyed in today's message and last but not least please visit our website proven and where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space you may reach us at contact at proven and michael raleigh of group 10 metals thank you for joining us today on proven and probable Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.